harbor is an exciting place because so many different things happen there every day. Today is a holiday, and Bob and his cousin Dan plan to explore the many bays and channels. Bob takes his regular place in the bow of the boat, and his dog Mac rides in the center. Yep, better sit down, Bob, while the boat is going. This boat really travels fast. Away they go, out into the big channel. Bob is lucky to have an older cousin who has an outboard motor. The motor is fastened to the boat before each trip, and after the ride, it is taken off and put into the boathouse. Large buoys in the harbor are markers to guide the boats and tell the sailors how to keep within the harbor channels. Buoys have fog horns, lights, and bells. In heavy fogs, they warn the people in the boats of danger spots and show them where the channels are deep and safe. These heavy piles are driven far down into the bottom of the bay. They are called dolphins and are a protection for the bridge beyond. The speed of a boat is measured in knots, just the way the speed of an automobile is measured in miles. A harbor has signs just like a street. A boat is allowed to go only six knots an hour in the harbor. A Navy boat was thrown on the rocks in a storm and has large holes in its side. It cannot be repaired, and the Coast Guard will haul it away before it sinks. If it were left underwater, it could not be seen and the boats might run into it. The Coast Guard inspects the harbor and keeps all the channels clear. Bob feels the water. Hey, pretty cold, huh? However, it's colder out here in the bay than it would be along the beach where Bob goes swimming. On they go toward the new steel harbor bridge with its towers that are 200 feet high. Boats 50 feet high can go under the bridge without the middle span being raised. When larger boats enter, the span can be raised 175 feet off the water. The supports for the towers are driven 90 feet down into the ground. Bob looks up as the cars slide over the bridge like large bugs. The bridge floor is open grating, because if it were solid, it would be too heavy to be raised easily. On the other side of the new bridge is the old bridge, which still is in use for cars and trains. Looking back, Bob can see the two bridges. The spans are now raised over the old bridge. Beyond is an oil refinery where coconut oil from the Philippines is refined. A large ferry boat or steamer with a load of 2,000 passengers is starting out on a pleasure ride for the day. The law requires them to carry a large number of lifeboats. You can see them along the lower deck. There must be a life preserver for each person on the boat. Here we see a different type of ferry boat. These boats carry 24 automobiles and 400 passengers across the harbor channel. The cars may ride on these boats for 25 cents apiece, with a small charge for each passenger. This is how it looks when you are on the ferry approaching the large ferry buildings. Bob has been on this boat, and he thinks it's lots of fun. These boats have a crew of seven men. Ferry boats are used in most harbors as they are a shortcut between two pieces of land. The left side of a boat is called the port side, and the right side is the starboard side. On Bob's port side, the large freighter steams by. It carries steel and manufactured goods from the eastern coast to the west coast, and returns to the east with a load of oranges and lemons. Large freighters dock at the pier or berth of their own steamship company.
While the cargo is being unloaded, these ships refuel from small barges. Cargo is put in large warehouses for protection. It is not stored long in the warehouses, but is sent as soon as possible to the company that has bought the cargo. An oil tanker is leaving for Arabia. The oil is stored in separate tanks in the hold of the ship, so that if the sea is rough, the oil will not all roll to one side and capsize the tanker. Different types of cargo must be stored in different ways in the large freighters. Another very large oil tanker is being pushed into dock by two tugboats. The pilot on the tanker gives directions to the pilots on the tugboats. The large boats cannot turn by themselves in a small space at a slow speed. Their engines are so powerful that they would approach the docks too fast. They must depend upon the tugboats to help them dock. Many pleasure boats pass. But Bob likes his little outboard boat the best of all and he hopes when he grows up to be able to run the engine, just like Dan. This square watchtower was used as a guardhouse in the war, and men watched night and day for enemy planes. Harbors are important in time of war, and are one of the first places an enemy tries to attack. Harbors have important industries, and also they have bases for the Navy and Air Force. At the mouth of a harbor, lighthouses stand guard. All during the night, the lights flash a warning to entering ships. Harbors are protected by large breakwaters that hurl back the heavy seas. A large yawl sails by swiftly in the brisk wind. It is arriving from Honolulu. Large sailboats can sail clear across the ocean. Mac is such a good sailor Bob and Dan have decided to call him the skipper of the ship. On they go into another bay. Every way that Bob looks, there are large freighters at their docks. And yes, a Matson Line passenger boat is pulling out for the Orient. Passengers line the docks, waving goodbye to their homeland. It is exciting to leave land behind and start across the big ocean. Again, we see how the large ship is dependent upon the small tugboat to help her out of the harbor channel. A Red Cross hospital ship is in dock. It is plainly marked with a Red Cross, so that in case of war, it will not be a target for enemy guns. A hospital ship has comfortable beds, operating rooms, and everything needed to care for the sick and wounded. Bob turns first one way and then the other to see all the harbor sights. Here, a beautiful white freighter from England is taking on cargo. The little boat sails on right under the bow of another large freighter. Bob likes to look up and see the huge anchors and the large black hoses that are refueling the boat while it is unloading. Dan explains how the boats must take on fuel, food, and other supplies for the long trip ahead. And what fun, the museum ship that is like an old sailing boat. People can buy a ticket and go aboard. It's fun to climb all over an old-fashioned sailing ship. The pirates used to use boats like this, and just for fun, the manager of this boat hung a dummy man from the yard arm. On the way home, they cruise along the edge of the breakwater. Bob looks down far into the clear pools. He looks for fish and crabs. Mac, too, watches the rocky bottom. Bob likes to see the waves wash over the beautiful seaweed and shells. One may find all kinds of things along a harbor shore. Once, Bob found a piece of a wrecked boat. 
What a wonderful day. Well, Dan says it is time to go back home and get that holiday dinner. The little boat turns toward dusk. A day in the brisk wind really makes a boy hungry. Bob thinks that exploring a harbor is the most exciting thing a boy can do.